Stav, Abby and Matt, the B105 Breakfast Show. Hey, podcasters. Uh, Ahoy, hoy. Jim Jeffries on the show today. Nice guy. He, he, was, he was an excellent chap. He's very funny. I want to watch his TV show. Is it called Legit, the TV show he did like 10 years ago? Oh, I don't know. He did have the Jim Jeffries show in America for a while. Oh. It wasn't too bad. Maybe it was Jim Je- but it, did he get to his second season? Because um, he was saying so. that he wouldn't be able to do it now on TV. Uh-huh. Like, since oh, it's the 10 too, years. Too yeah, mm. like how many things have changed in the world that he wouldn't be able to. Mm. He, um, he's he went, very funny. Mm, he really went viral with his uh, gun jokes, mm. remember, as well, when he was living in America and yeah. he was sort of saying that he's quite a, you've got to be quite a clever man mm. to mm. be able to find the humour and stuff like that. Well, it's all in the way you do it, really. I know. It? I know. It's it. how you present it. Mm. Uh, so he's on. Uh, we're going to chat to him. Scotty finally finds out that you're going on a three day bender with just the girls. It's not a three day bender. <laughs> Oh, isn't it? Sorry, no. What, what is it? I've got massages in between. Oh, okay. Yeah, you don't normally get those on benders. Um, <laughs> That's a rub and tug. The... That's different. Uh, oh, oh uh, that was seriously. Wow, what do you think of Why us? would you? I don't know. What? Banana massage? What do you want to call it? I don't, I've never heard that before. Oh, Banana okay. massage. Mm. We, we would not play Scotty tug of war <laughs> on a drinking trip. You don't? Trip. Okay. Each of their own. That's why we don't Can you cancel those? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know a, a friend of mine? Yes. Yeah. A woman yeah. got offered that. Mm. About a massage. By a ma- masseuse started... in, in India yeah, when right. she was on holiday in India. And mm. we're like, Do you want that? And they're like, Yeah? Mm. That's how long's a massage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Yeah. And then the guy pulled out a big map and said, hey, I just need to see where I'm going first. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get into it. Here's the podcast, guys. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Escape to a haven of peace and relaxation at Daydream Island Resort and Living Reef. Abby's Dream Long Lunch. What a stitch up. It's not a stitch up. If you want to come along, ladies, if you just need to get away, if it's all getting a little bit too much and you want to celebrate International Women's Month. it's been a long year for you. Month, uh-huh. If it has been, of course, register b105.com.au. It is going to be an epic lunch. Mm-hmm. How many days are you going it's for? two nights because the flights to Hamilton Island, I just had to coordinate those. Yeah, fair well, enough. Okay. Well, you don't want to get on a plane after a lunch. No, you got to wait get 20 there. minutes before you fly. Yeah, and then you don't want to get you, you to the lunch, you know what I mean? It's a, Yeah, yeah, of course, girl. Mm. Mm. Sink mm-hmm. sister. Um, but, I mean, let's be honest here, it could just be a long lunch with no Abby because you haven't done the most important thing. I have Well, I didn't check with Scotty because I... Said stuff him. I'm going. <laughs> no, I was waiting for the right moment. We just haven't had any moments recently. As in, you were waiting for him to be extremely hungover one morning when your points have built up enough mm. to say, hey, I'm going away with the girls. I was going to ask him when the kids have gone to bed and it's uh, getting harder because they go to bed later. Anyway, hey, uh-huh. Scotty. <laughs> Hello. Good morning, people. Hey, How mate. are we? Had you heard about this? Have you Had you heard about this trip to Daydream Island and what do you think about it? No, I haven't really heard much about anything, oh, really. Oh, oh, oh well. Man. Hello, like mushrooms, mate. Kept in the dark and fed, you know what? <laughs> Without swearing. All right. right okay. Well, no, we'll know, leave you two to discuss it. Yeah. Ab- Abby's got something she needs to Sit. ask. Yeah. No, I yeah. did mention to you, I think I mentioned to you, or you might have heard it on the radio, that we are going to Daydream Island for two nights for a long lunch. Are we? No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Not us. You've actually been there, so I didn't want to take you to the same place. Do you remember going? Yeah, we uh, sat down in the... Uh, Open aquarium there and um, had a few ink gins, I think. Yes. My memory. Yes, yeah, you can watch. Got a bit take carried away. You can watch the fish. Let you go to this downstairs. We know how good it is. <laughs> yeah, you don't need <laughs> to tell us in. and say, "Hey, it's amazing," but you're not invited. You're okay yeah. though, aren't you, hun? Uh, static, honey. You know me. <laughs> you know, I, I'm always excited. Yeah, I think it's good for you to spend some quality time Just, with the kids during yeah. the week. You know what I mean? For the kids' sports yeah. and. Homework yeah. and lunches and, you know. 
looking forward to it. And, yeah. you know, this is just another few points in the Vegas trip box. <laughs> oh, my God. Did I not tell you that he said that? I said it will be a Vegas trip. If you guys can organise a Vegas trip, because now all of a sudden I've been kicked off this Vegas trip that we were trying to organise as a team mm. here. Matty, Stab, you better not be organising the um, <clears throat> NRL one without me. I'll be very disappointed, no. boys. No, because no, the op- that's at the same time as the long lunch. So that- is oh, is oh. oh, you guys are getting shafted. What are you guys at? We yeah. didn't get it approved. Yet. It was still Nothing. up in the air. It wasn't. We tried to go. And look, if you guys... I'll organise the flights and everything. <laughs> if you guys organise it, I will fly from Hamilton Island to Vegas. Uh, you, you've already had your long lunch, Lave. So <laughs> hey, listen to you. Hey, I don't know how is she. Don't want to miss out, FOMO. No, I'm not missing out on Vegas. I'm doing it all. You guys can have some brownie points. Do something else. Go away to... Oh, what? We'll just go... Shopping or go to the beach for one day. Wow. Well, okay. Cool. If you guys want to do that, no, I'll arrange yeah. it. What do you guys want? What do you think is what do you think is equivalent then? Besides Vegas, where do you want to go for two nights or a night and a half? Vegas. <laughs> you want to go to Vegas for a, for a, two nights? You would want to go for two nights. Oh, yeah, wow. trust me, Scotty and I. You could you could if you two nights might be enough. Right. We did. A, what do we do? Do we do a week and a half? That's too long. Uh, I think we need a week. Well, it depends. It Proper felt like trip. a week. You gotta, you know, you gotta do a week, I reckon. Yeah. yeah okay. Take it all in. Okay. Yeah. So, are you saying you a couple if... of nights to recover, and mm. then you know, yeah. you know, you gotta get back on it again? So, you know, going to Vegas with Scotty is it's hard work. Mm. <laughs> <That's not. laughs> mm. I'm willing to take that risk. Well, we need to know, don't we? <laughs> we can't just go off what other people say. Right. Secondhand information. We need, actually, we need to actually live it. I walked down to the casino lobby in my pajamas to mm. try and find him because he went missing at three in the morning. Just sold on the table, baby. <laughs> I'll bring something lacy. <laughs> <laughs> I sleep naked, so that'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Scotty. Well, Love you. Wave me back to the room with well, a lacy um, lingerie. Uh, didn't work, did it, honey? No, I sat next to a group of strangers and asked why they like to gamble at this time of night, and they pointed at you and said, this is why. Mm-hmm. He said, I'd rather poke her down here. <laughs> oh, uh... okay. <laughs> All right, maybe you guys can go to Vegas, Vegas please. So. All right, we'll try and organise a boys' trip for you, Scotty. Sure. So fair's fair. All right. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, have a lovely day. Speak Love you. Soon. Love you, bye. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Dear Abby. Sometimes in life, sh- gets real. And that's when you need Abby to help. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> I don't know what to say for this one. Mm-hmm. If you've got a dilemma, you've got a situation, you want to send it in, you can. Dear Abby at b105.com.au. I actually met this girl on Friday night, bumped into her at the Pink concert, mm-hmm. so she DM'd me, right? She's got a little bit of a dilemma. Something exciting happened after the Pink concert, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. She said, hey, Abby, uh, Friday night after I bumped into you at the Pink concert, uh, I have to give you an update about what happened after. We caught the train home and my friend and I started talking to this guy who was leaving work drinks late. He was very chatty and really lovely and really quite cute. Um, He said, would you ladies like to get a drink? So we were at the same stop and went and got one after. Everything was kind of shutting. So he was really lovely, but it was very quick. And he walked, me and my flatmate, home. My flatmate walked inside and he said, hey would you mind if I take you out on Friday night as an official date, which is now in a couple of nights time. Mm -hmm. Anyway, like I said, he lived close by, haven't seen him my whole life. And then wham, I just bumped into him at the chemist. That literally bumped into him. I was getting my script filled. Didn't really feel like chatting too much, but I looked down at his basket. Yes, he was getting a few things, deodorant, but I know that I clocked female hygiene products. Mm -hmm. I think I did. Mm-hmm. Now, that's really quite strange. I mean, when you're thinking about it, we never really spoke about relationships like, are you officially single? But if you ask someone on a date, that's just presumed. Now, I'm like, do I still go on a date with him or do I just call it off? I know I should have probably said something there, but it's not like you just speak to one person and say, hey, let's go through your basket. <laughs> Which is true. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. But now I can't stop thinking about it. And my friends are like, well, it has to be a girlfriend or a wife. It's okay. not like... <sighs> So what do I do? Do I call it off or do I go out on the date? Go on the date. Thirteen, ten, sixty. What do you think? What do you? Who else could it be? You don't. Flatmate, sister, mother. No, have you ever bought it for your sister? No, but mate, I lived with a female flatmate for ages. And you bought it for your flatmate. My male flatmates never did. Well, times are a changing. Get on board, baby. Manny, 
Uh, he's going to say cheating straight away. No, but do you think that you would... Uh, okay, let me, uh, let me ask this question. <laughs> you have, don't know oh, that. yes, I do. You don't know. What do you think? Then? Have you ever Cheating bought dog. it? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> for anyone else but your wife? Be no, honest. No, you no. You I've, only, I've only ever bought them mom. for my wife. And if he's like 28, I don't know if he... Was, and if he's still living with his mum, that's my issue. And if his mum still needs him, I don't know. You know what I mean? I think there's something wrong with society. If a dude has got some tampons in his basket at the chemist and everyone just straight away jumps to the fact that he's a dirty, cheating dog who doesn't deserve I didn't say he's a dirty dog. We're, not, we're say... not saying that for sure. We're not saying that for sure. <laughs> saying it's a possibility. She clocked it and questioned, would you not? Oh, I'd question, but I'd still go on the date, giving him the chance to I'd still reply. go on the date. I said still go on the date. Yeah. But, I mean, you have to ask Unless, at do that you point. Go, do you want to go on the date when he's on, on his no. period? <laughs> I just think when you go there, you have to sort of then speak about, hey, like how long I have you been single it. for? Yeah. And well, then he'll say, oh, I've been single for... Like a day and a half. <laughs> <laughs> but if he goes, oh, I've got a crazy ex, you go, oh, okay, that's it. Yeah. Mm. Or if he's like just recently, and then you could say, hey, I didn't know when you were shopping. I thought yeah. I saw... And then he can explain it. Well, see, and she couldn't ask there on the spot because then if they had to discuss what was in his basket, then she would, she have, would have to, to discuss say, that. And what prescription to be honest, did you just pop in there? She if we're going to be really open. <laughs> said that she didn't want to discuss that. Well, right. no one wants to talk about their prescription. Mm. 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 I mean, I do think you have to go on the date. Yeah. But I do think it's of a course. bit. Of course. Is she positive that's what she saw, though? Like, no. maybe it was... Tissues or if something. If it wasn't yeah. anything and she like Cotton looked balls. down or whatever mm. and he would be like, oh, hey, just so you know, <laughs> getting these for. I'm an artist and they're really good to make clouds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's multiple reasons. There is. Yeah. There is. Maybe he's got a kid and he was going to use them as Nerf bullets. Like oh, any... can you do that? Nerf bullets possibly? are pretty cheap. <laughs> cheaper than these. I mean, I know they're not taxed, Matt, now, but they're still not that cheap. Well. Did we even say the phone number? Because <laughs> we've got a full phone board here. <laughs> Leonie and Tambourine, what do you think? Hi, guys. Um, well, when I was married to my ex-husband, we had a roommate at the time, um, and I needed, obviously, some female products. And I asked my husband to go down the shop, and he's like, no, I'm not buying those, no way, no way. And my flatmate was like, yeah, sure, no worries, I'll buy them. So mm. your flatmate so, would? Okay, yep. Yeah, so it, it could be a flatmate, it could be a sister, mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily have to be a girlfriend or a wife. No. No, okay. It's possible. It's, it's it is possible. I guess for possible. me, personally, I just wouldn't ever ask my mm. brothers. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, well, that's true. And I didn't ask my roommate, but he offered. Because so. he's that yeah. sort of guy that's like, I'm not afraid of that. Mm. Yeah, he was like, yep, sure, no worries. Whereas yeah. my ex-husband was like, no, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. <laughs> is, he still, is he still weird about it now, he's your husband? Uh, well, he's my ex-husband, so... So, yes, yeah. he would be weird if you rang him and said, <laughs> yeah. hey, can you go to the <laughs> Would be a little bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> not straight away, but just weird. <laughs> get a shake uh, <laughs> in Mansfield. What do you think? She should still go on a date? What, what could it possibly be? Go on the date. I've bought them for my sister. I'll give her a call. Hey, I'm at the shops. Need anything? I'll pick them up for her. Yep. The other thing is sometimes they have those, um, uh, like, help the homeless, like, oh, share the yes. dignity or whatever yes. it is. Yeah, share the dignity. You're I will right. buy yeah. some. Like, they're like, you know, buy a couple of packets, especially if they're on sale, and toss them in there as I leave. So. Mm -hmm. If that was the case, he would have been begging her to That's ask what I mean. So he could be if like, he... oh, these are for charity. Would you think, though, Jacob, let's just say if you bump into someone, right, and they look down, they clock your trolley or whatever, and they yeah. see them, would you at that, that point go, oh, hey, these are for my sister, or, hey, taking no. these to... No, okay. No. It, no, no. I, I would be like, yeah. like, why can't she go on the date and ask the question? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, you know, yeah. who do you live with? Or, like, what's your living situation? Like, obviously and, not like that. But... And you're right there, Jacob. And let this be a lesson to any man who wants to give back to the homeless or uh, any charity that it, if you, you are seen out doing that, you will be judged as a cheater and scum. Oh, mate, why don't you go out and buy some and then donate to a charity, all right? I wouldn't want my wife to think I was cheating oh, on her. Oh, for goodness sake. I She'd mean, be like, finally! He, I mean, <laughs> the poor guy was probably there to buy some products for himself for the weekend in case he got a little lucky. Mm -hmm. Imagine that, if they were in there being a bit presumptuous. I think it's just worse when you look at something and you wish you didn't look. You know, oh, you try not to, then you're like, oh, now I'll make eye contact. <laughs> Kerry, in Marumba Downs, what do you reckon? She should go on the flag? Oh, sorry. She, she no. goes, what? She, what? It says your red flag. Sorry. Yeah. You think it is a red flag and she shouldn't go on the date? Oh, yeah, no. She should can it unless she confronts it before she goes on the date. 
because all she's going to do on the date is look at him and think, you sleazebag, why have you got them, you know, mm. lady products in your basket? She's yeah. going to waste the time. So do you reckon she should say that before? Like, just go, hey, I, I still want to go on the date, but what was that? Yeah, she should. Should. What, you sound really... busy. We'll leave you to it there, Carrie. <laughs> she's working. She's working hard. Mark, what do you think? Look, there's a couple of things here. I've got um, a couple of daughters. Yeah. Um, funnily enough, it's her birthday tomorrow, and you guys actually sung her happy birthday when she was six. <gasps> oh, wow. Um, oh. But yeah. I have got text messages from my daughters before yeah. saying, hey, can you get me these? And they send me photos of what they need. So as a single parent, mm. my daughters have sent me photos before to actually get that stuff from them. Mm-hmm. Um, so. so an interesting thing you can tell this person is my therapist I've been a jealous type before as well mm. and my therapist actually gave me an acronym for fear which is false evidence appearing real uh, uh, good one I like that I do like that your daughter send photos gee that's smart oh, all yeah. guys are like why haven't my wife ever done that <laughs> that would, that would she help. just send the text that's a good point I have to say this girl's 26 and she said that he's he's a tiny bit older right so oh, that could well that would be mm. 30. And then he'd probably have a child when he was about his fifth. Age. Okay, yeah, all right, could be. <laughs> I know. I'm so invested on this Friday night. Oh, oh. I can't wait to find out <laughs> the end of this yeah. story. Yeah, Absolutely. Shannon and Roach. Oh, should we all go? Should they go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> um, what do you think? Should she go on the date? Yeah. So my um, family are all hunters, uh-huh. and they get them um, for their dogs. So when their dogs get injured, mm. they shove the tampons in to soak up the blood. Oh my god! I mean, that's oh, that's, that's mm-hmm. got to be a rarity, though, yeah. right? That no, 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 it happens okay. happens all the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whenever they're out hunting, or you know, if they jump off the ute and mm-hmm. injure themselves or something, get cut up. They do use yep. them, I know, uh, for blood noses at sporting events sometimes too. So maybe he's a yep. coach of a team or something. It's pretty far fetched, though, don't you think? I don't oh. think it's as far fetched as him ch- cheating. cheating on his yeah. wife um, on the basis of one product in his oh. basket. But you know, everyone's got different views. But no, don't go. On the I'll date. let you know. He's a scumbag. I'll let <laughs> you know. Yeah. And can I come hunting with you sometime? That sounds like fun. He'll bring his yeah, own sure. tampons, Shannon. <laughs> He's got yeah. them always. <laughs> yeah. The B one hundred and five Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby, and Matt. Oh, Jim Jeffries is on uh, and he's returning for a great show, The 1% Club. Great to have you on, buddy. Thanks for having me. Very excited to be here. Yeah, The 1% Club coming back tonight on your telly on Channel 7. Uh, new season of The 1% Club. We're not stopping there. We're recording a new season again in about uh, July or something. So we're going to keep them coming. But uh, we're, 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 up, we're up against Married at First Sight. It might be difficult. <laughs> I... I, I I've stopped following all the Married at First Sight OnlyFans accounts. So the dent in their actual uh, their income. So that people watch the One Percent Club. You got to help out where I can. You say things like that, like that. We were just talking just before in the song, and you've got a curtain behind you, and I just thought it looked really formal, and you're wearing like a jacket. It looked very classy. But no, you I, said you. I've got oh. things. It's a house. I live yeah. here. I just. It looked like I it was a state. Oh, basement. <laughs> I love it. You look very classy, uh, as if she's saying. Usually, when I see you, you look terrible. What, game Jim. show host. He has to wear. <laughs> Jacket, but you said that your wife is there. If you say things that she doesn't like, does she just give you the stare, or does she just go? Mm-mm, mm-mm. My wife, my wife's an actress, and she's upstairs doing an audition, so she gets very angry oh. with me talking right now. She's occasionally looking out over. Uh, there's a balcony upstairs, and she looks down at me and acts like I'm being a bad person. But as for me saying jokes about her that she gets upset with, mm. first she has to be able to understand them, and that's very <laughs> rare for her. <laughs> so for the most part. <laughs> It goes over her head, and, and I'm okay. <laughs> no, she'll, she'll, hate, she'll hate that joke if, if she gets ha- Having been a fan of your stand-up, and I do love, uh, me and, and my missus do love the 1% Club. It's a, such a great format for a TV show. But it is kind of a, you're kind of doing crowd work, but you're, you're, do you have to um, tame your stand-up down, or is there a lot of stuff that's cut in a, from the show? 
There would be there would be an X rated version of the One Percent Club. Mm. The Channel Seven should show at like ten pm. Mm-hmm. So I just I just say whatever I want. I have nothing to do with the edit of the show. I haven't watched the episodes back, so I don't know what jokes I get through and what jokes I don't. Mm. My biggest concern is when I'm there is just reading the questions. <laughs> I'm dumb as a rock. I can hardly read. There's several times that uh, when I start the show, I say to the people, I go, "Hey." Read the question yourself. Don't listen to me because I might get it wrong. I, I don't even think this is the voice you're meant to have to read questions. <laughs> you read questions. Oh, no, because it makes you sound like you've got a chance of answering it. Who is next yeah. to you, by the way? It's my, my assistant, Jack. Hey, Jack. Hey, Jack. Jack's, Jack's an American person. <laughs> he does that. Yeah, he, he's an assistant to a stand-up comedian, so someone's got no job aspirations, have they? You know? Uh, um, poor Jack. You were Wait a minute, I just, I just got to fix him. There's a small tears just gone down the side of his face. <laughs> you, um, you, you're doing uh, a lot of the radio shows this morning, and you were just telling us before how excited you are that you, everyone's talking to you about Taylor Swift as well. Yeah, Taylor Swift in you're Sydney. Big fan, I, you know? I, had one, I had one of the radio shows goes, is this big news in America? Mm-hmm. Taylor was in Melbourne. I'm like, is it big news in America? <laughs> we're, we're wondering that I, no one knows that Taylor Swift is on tour in Australia. It only seems to be you guys are very excited. I heard that she went to dinner last night. <laughs> Who would have thought it? <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you, you'll be very excited about this. I used to date Taylor Swift back in the day, and I have a sex tape. So if you're excited about the dinner, <laughs> I'm going to sell it to the highest bidder. <laughs> uh, you can't see it, either our faces. They're both blurred out. That's right. how she wanted it. Yep. But uh, it does exist. <laughs> Are you getting a look from your wife? She's like, oh, come on, Jim. Oh, yeah, she's back on the balcony. What? Excuse me? She's like, you win. Uh, how, I mean, you've how long have you lived in America for now? You've been there for I've lived I've lived in America for fifteen years, and I wow. lived in the UK for ten years before that. I haven't lived in Australia since I was twenty one. Was the last time I lived in Australia. But yeah. I think about moving back all the time. I, I'd like to live in Perth, actually. I have a soft spot for Perth. I, I'd like an isolated city with nice beaches. I could live in Brisbane. I know you people up in Brisbane. I I, I watch Bluey. I watch more Bluey. Than my two-year-old does. Yeah. I try to push it onto him. He's more about. Pe- so my wife's British mm. and I'm Australian, obviously, and I'm there pushing Bluey, and she's pushing Peppa Pig to mm. the other side. The kid doesn't want to watch either shows, but we, we really want to get get it going like that. And and the One Percent Club is made by BBC Studios, which makes uh, BBC uh, makes Bluey as well. Yeah. So I, I actually went to the executives of the One Percent Club and I said, Hey. I'd like to be a voice mm-hmm. on Bluey that would blow my kid's mind. And you know what they said back to me? Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it turns out that the, the people at Bluey <laughs> yeah. don't want a comedian who says the C word a lot. No. 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 Just to be a- I think they've got like Hamish Blake before, <laughs> you know, people like that, a little bit more what's wholesome. The, what's the C word for Bluey though, cat? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, because you that that is the thing, isn't it? You know, like if a if a kid or or a, a parent he, he sees your name that you've featured on, they go, you know what? Let's look him up on YouTube. Oh, if you like that's him, you'll love his, his other, other shows. That's true. <laughs> Let's see what he gets up to. That, that's that's the thing. I I I've never had this before, but now when I walk around shopping malls in Australia. 70 to 90 year old women think oh, I'm a bit of the all right. Mm-hmm. I don't know where it's come from, but I'm a, I'm a sex symbol in that area. I, mate, I could trip over in a nursing home in Australia and get laid right now. <laughs> They're so excited. <laughs> well, you've made it. But then, <laughs> but, 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 then, but then they go watch my stand up and they like me even more. Uh, <laughs> they get to that age, they don't care. They've dealt with it. He's a naughty, naughty boy. A naughty. <laughs> Mate, the 1% Club, it returns tonight, uh, 7.30, Channel 7, 7 Plus as well. We Can't appreciate wait. the time. Great to talk to you this morning. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And bye, Jack, your assistant. Yeah, see you, Jack. Sorry, mate. Jack, say goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> see you, bye, Jack. Yeah, good. <laughs> there is Jim Jeffries and his assistant, Jack. The B105 <laughs> Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby, and Matt. Me, baby, one more time. <laughs> what did you do when you were in labour? What did you still do? You know, because traditionally you'd see the movies and the water would break and they'd rush to hospital and they couldn't mm-hmm. do anything else. But that's not always the case. And sometimes you can still achieve stuff while you're in labour and you're like, you know what, I've got things to do. I know the baby's going to come eventually. <laughs> but imagine if you were 
almost 40 weeks or 39 or five days and you were like, I'm at the Taylor Swift concert. Mm. Oh, right. That's that's constra- contractions. Uh, that's labour. That's not Braxton Hicks. But she has not finished. Mm. So I'm going to stay because that happened <laughs> in Melbourne to this girl. 40 weeks pregnant, Melbourne local Tennille attended the show with her girlfriends. Despite experiencing a few early signs of labour, she was determined to go. Baby Sloan was born just two hours after Taylor finished her last song, with Tennille making a swift exit out of the MCG. So she had an hour ride to go to the hospital, the Mercy Hospital in Werribee. Mm-hmm. from the MCG. You know that is... Quite a drive out of the city. that, how nerve-wracking would it be trying to get out with the rest of the crowds? Mm. She wouldn't but, have stayed for encore, surely. Well, she said that she wanted to stay till the last song. Wow. She said the contractions were there and I stayed until the final song. No, <laughs> she As fans flooded the exit, her and her friends rushed out of the stadium. Wow. She would have got out quick. She's in, she Even if she was faking the labour, yeah. everyone yeah. would have yeah. out the way yeah. and let, let her go, let her go. But still, I mean, I guess you're getting first on the taxi line. But just to stay there throughout that, I thought mm. that's... that's so, and she went to the hospital and she was two centimetres dilated, right? Mm. At 1am. And you think, oh, okay, you've got plenty of time. She had the baby at one twenty. Oh, thump. Wow. So she really held on. Yeah, wow. and then relaxed when she got to the hospital. Just, ah. <laughs> <thump. Okay. laughs> Cute baby. But I do know what you continued to do because I found it really weird that my sister-in-law, she baked a cake. So she went into labour. Yeah. She called the hospital and, you know, they like count the contractions or whatever. Yeah. Mm. So it was my brother's birthday and she ended up having her son on my brother's birthday, her, mm. the dad. Yeah. And she still baked the cake. So even when she came from dinner. the hospital, she still had one in the oven. Huh, good one. Thanks. But I was like... Was she, had she already started or was she yeah. like cracking the eggs and like whisking? She had plans that she was do- going to do it. She went into labour. Oh, but I then, better pop that cake on before I go. But that's, yeah. all, like, that's still you're putting it in for an hour or 40 minutes. Mm. Yeah. 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 For me, I'd be like, no, put your feet up. Maybe she couldn't yeah. relax until... You know, she'd be cake like, had been a, done. Yeah, she'd be like, I've got. She should have been home making that cake. Another yeah. friend of mine decided to get a bikini wax. Okay. I mean, her friend did it, and her friend was a beautician, so she went there and right. did it. But I was what? like, that's just. So was yeah okay. She so was supposed to get it baby done. Go and her early. baby was two weeks early, and she was like, "No way! I've said this. We were supposed to get I it done. I'm not going to hospital like this." Mm. She, it's a bit more arty. She wanted to film it. Uh-huh. Oh, I okay. guess so she wanted it looking at. I'm like, if you're the filming person, you're a little bit more au natural, right? She's like, no, don't, don't. don't. How, how close was she when she was getting the Brazilian? Like, did they remove any of the baby's a, hair? No. <laughs> the baby's got a bald mm. spot. No. Hmm. Maybe no one's as new. Oh, so that's true. Stuck to it. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> but what did you still achieve? Like, what did you do? Did you not rush off to hospital? Did you do something in the meantime? I've heard mm. people watch movies. <laughs> Because what are you going to do? Like went to the cinema? No, but like, <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to see? You're like, I'm not buying know. two tickets. <laughs> any, this is me now. Anything that I'm allowed to <laughs> grimace during because I'm in labour right now. Because if you go into labour, sometimes you've got a lot of time. Yeah. Did yeah. you have yeah. a lot of time with yours? Because I, because ours was a, a, like a planned C-section for the last so, two, so I don't know. I was at work when Esther went into labour with Xander. Mm. I was in an interview with Paula Abdul. Yeah. And. I, she rang and I was like, "That's she, she's." But you finished the interview. Uh, finished the interview, went home, got her, and her water had broken, well, so she yeah. cleaned all that up. And then she's like, "I've called the hospital." They said, "Just come whenever." But then we kicked around home and had lunch for a See? few hours. You still had lunch. And then when we got to the hospital, they were like, "Where have you been?" And I was like, "Oh, well, we meant to rush here because <laughs> I had no idea." Were you Can counting I, them? No, I, I didn't even she really was, know okay. what was happening. Can I ask a very important question? What did you have for lunch? Who made the lunch? She made the lunch. Of course she made Who the made lunch. Who made the lunch? He was putting his feet up. He was stressed. Who made the lunch? No. She wanted to. Oh, she wanted to make the lunch. She wanted to feed her man before. Such a jerk. Just, just wanted to know. I'm pretty, no, I, I, I was giving I, you a chance I, to I shine. I probably made the lunch. I probably uh, made. I would have bought something on the way home. Mm. You remember the details of who you're interviewing. You remember everything else and then you don't remember if you stopped for lunch or not. I have the most wonderful woman <laughs> who's gifted me children. And lunch. And lunch. <laughs> 13, 10, 60. When did you still have to make lunch for your man when you're no, in labour? Excuse me, that's... <laughs> oh, you weren't as dirty on your sister for the cake. Yeah. 
Oh. It was my birthday in like four months. It was <laughs> <laughs> Dan in Fernie Grove. Dan, what did you do while you were still in labour? How are we, guys? Good, mate. Good. Good. Mate, it wasn't actually me. It was my wife. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> she went into labour early, early in the morning and... Um, Rather than going to the hospital, I mean, I was like, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. She's like, no, 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 no. Decided to go shopping for about three hours, sat down for a coffee, and then finally decided to go to the hospital. So how long after she got to the hospital did she give birth? Uh, 36 hours, I think it was. Oh, right, so oh, she could have had so another coffee. Yeah, 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 plenty of time. She could have come back home and stayed the night again. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to, though. Because they don't want you in <laughs> hospital for that long, do they? They try to get uh, you in and out. Yeah, they do, but uh, yeah, that, if you if you haven't had the baby and your waters are broken, they do keep you in hospital. Yes. Yeah, there's yeah. a concern about a dry birth. So yeah, yes, I'm guessing it wasn't her first then if she was that chill about it. No, it's her sixth. Yeah, that's oh, that's yeah, why yeah. she yeah. wanted yeah. to yeah. stay yeah. at the hospital. She's like <laughs> telling to the telling the nurses, "I'll tell you what's happening." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what you do. Thank you, Sarah in Warner. You went into labour, and what did you get up to while that was happening? Well, it wasn't actually happening. <laughs> I went into hospital. This is in the UK. Can I just start with that? Okay. Um, it's very different over there. And um, 17 years ago too. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I went into labour. Got to five centimetres dilated. I was a month early, and uh, got to five centimetres, and everything stopped. All the contractions stopped. Everything stopped. So they said, "Oh, well, you may as well go home because there's nothing happening." Mm-hmm. And then two weeks went past, <gasps> and then nothing was going on that whole two weeks. And then I woke up in the middle of the night and she was in my arms 15 minutes later. Wow. Wow. That's quick. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Two weeks? That's not quick. (laughs) No, sorry. (laughs) So how bad were the contractions in those two weeks where they stopped? Yeah, nothing. There was no pain. It was my second baby. Wow. And there was just nothing Mm. happening. You've been in labour more than some politicians. What sort of child (laughs) is she? (laughs) What sort of child is she like? Is she pretty chilled? She's she's called the takeoff kid. That's what we call her. So she might try a couple of times before she gets things and then she'll just get it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Like the labour, I guess. All right, Aisha in Gordon Park. What did you get up to while you were in labour? Um, well, it wasn't me actually. It was a friend of mine. Um, she's like African um, heritage, mm-hmm. and so she was like running out of. Obviously, when you have a baby, you don't have a lot of time to like um, look after yourself as well because you're too busy focused on the baby. Mm. So she was like, "I need to like get my hair under control before the baby comes." So she went into labour and was like, oh, my God, but then started braiding her own hair, like putting extensions and braiding her own hair. <laughs> How long did that take so, her? Uh, it took like four or five hours, I think. Oh, wow. Um, wow. And so, yeah, she was literally just braiding it. And then every time she had a contraction, contraction she would, like, stop. have a stop, like break, have yeah. a stop. And then she would keep going and keep braiding. And then wow. once she had like, finished her hair, she was like, all right, sweetie, let's go. And then her partner took her to the hospital. Wow. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> So, because I remember being in contraction, I couldn't do anything, mm. and I had to sign all this document because it was, was going to be like an emergency C-section. And everyone just stops, like no one talked. Mm. While you were having well, your contraction, contraction, yeah. yeah. And then after that, I, have you finished? Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah. They're like, okay. Guess so. So, <laughs> 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 this is weird. Uh, all right, Cassandra. Hey, hello. What did you do? Um, I went and seen the premiership for Avengers: Infinity War. <laughs> Um, My favourite one so far. Well done. <laughs> I yeah. So I went and had. I was having contractions beforehand. My partner and I had our, had our tickets for a few weeks mm-hmm. because we are we love our Avengers. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I went and seen it. <laughs> finished the movie. Finished. We sat down, watched. Oh no, the yeah, watched the end credits. Nice and work, the contractions it? stopped. <laughs> That was it. Because the there's always a, a, oh, like an Easter egg at the that. end of the yeah, credits. Yeah, yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. So then did you go um, to hospital? How long after? No. Um, it was my fourth child, right, so right. I was pretty much, oh, they've stopped. There's yeah, nothing right. really happening. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was it. And then three weeks later, I was booked uh. in for a induction because he didn't want to come. Wow. Oh, maybe it was a movie. He heard too much. He's too scared to come out. He's like, this is what Earth <laughs> yeah. is like. Didn't, didn't want to get No chance. Yeah. <laughs> the B105 <laughs> Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. This morning I was driving to work and I was thinking about the mums and the dads have been 
up throughout the night. Yeah. You know, just how stressful it can be when you've got a child that's not sleeping, whether it is a newborn baby and you're feeding and just it feels completely overwhelming and you feel like this is always going to be the case and you don't really know what you're doing and you're reading parenting books. And I read, I think it was even like one of like those save my sleeps and you had to put a child to bed at this time mm. and they would wake up at this time and you're like, how do they know what my child needs? Mm. And I, it was just... It was just really hard. And if I look back, I totally had um, postnatal depression. Yeah. I guess going back to work so early, not having a child that slept, he was up mm. like eight times a night. And I was like, I don't know if I can do this mm. anymore. Oh, I remember. And then, yeah, it was awful. Mm. And then when he was getting older and coming into the room and I'd walk him back because that was all the parenting books. And this morning I was kicked in the head <laughs> numerous times <laughs> by our five-year-old. Who comes into the bed mm. at whatever time. And I've never walked him back to his bed because I just don't care anymore. And although you don't get a good night's sleep, I'm like, it's so quick. Mm. And I think that's what I realize now and just want to tell people just to appreciate the, the crap. kick in the head. Yeah, mm. appreciate mm. the appreciate crap it. that you're going through because it doesn't last. Because last night I went to a mother-son event with my 12-year-old. Mm -hmm. It was about, you know, quality time together and all those things. And you asked a question about who is the most important people in his life. And he was very honest with it. And I totally get that. And the answer would be... His friends. His friends. Mm. And you've always said this. Where even though your child may still live with you until they are 18 or 25 or whatever it is, they don't actually adore you <laughs> for that time. No. That admiration for you really starts to die probably around about 10 or 11. Yeah, once they can start working out what sort of a person you actually are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's true. And I know that you'd be going through it now where... Mm friends and even YouTube and whatever, they mm -hmm. have more of an influence over your child than you do in that sense of the starry eyed, oh my God, you know everything. Mm. Wait till you ring your son and ask him if he wants to come and do something. And he says, let me check, check with my, my wife, wife and I'll come back to you. You're like, oh yeah, that's right. But how yeah. many times would you go back to that little kid that might've been quite difficult at the time or for whatever it was. Mm. And then you just go, I just wish I could hug that little child again and then look up with you with like your God. But those times, I think sometimes you rush through them because it can mm. be quite difficult. Mm. You know, whether it is a sleepless night or them answering back mm. or whatever. And I guess I'm sort of blessed because I've still got a little five-year-old. I think that's why people have yeah. more kids. Oh, that's totally why we that's did. That's true, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I look at it and, you know, a lot of the parents were talking last night about how hard it is giving their child the freedom mm. and letting them go and have in them influenced by their friends and yeah. not being like that anymore. And I was like, I'm going to go home and hug him. And then he came into our room and kicked my head all night and it was so good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole, the first child, I just was so set on doing it right mm. where they couldn't sleep in the room and you had to walk them back and you couldn't let them sleep too much during the day mm. and you couldn't do dummies. Mm. You couldn't do that. And you go, who cares in the grand scheme of it? None of that mm. makes any difference. You know, you stress yourself out cause you can't breastfeed and that person could and, as long as they're fed, who cares? Mm. I mean, that, that's what they say. No kid ever grows up and goes, you know, my parents, I was so lucky. They worked really hard. They kept the house really clean. Mm. Cooked mm. me dinner every night. So how many like, um, months not, were you breastfed to, mate? Yeah, oh, well, I was, well, your person me. really. <laughs> uh, like that, you know, obviously that stuff is important, but it's not truly what the kids what, what a child's going to grow up to remember. I think you get so worried about it that you're not in the present moment. And when you look back at it and you go, it's never true when you say that, you know, the days are long and the years are quick mm, mm -hmm. and you just try and take that little bit of a, I don't know, more of a moment mm. just to appreciate it because it goes so quickly. <laughs> you know, cry? No, no. I just, I, I, I honestly feel sad about the way that I acted when I had my first child. Well, that's a waste of time child. too. Yeah, I know. That's true. But I was just so harsh, I guess, on myself and harsh on him to sort of do it right mm. that I look at him now and I just go, oh. You did a great job, though. Yeah. He's a good beautiful kid. young man. Well, answers back something chronic. Well, that's your fault. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's nothing to do with it, what you were doing back then. He's good because of you, and his bad stuff is also because of you. Yeah. I thought he's dad, but anyway, thank you. No, no, no. It's all you. Just know. be kind to yourself. <laughs>
<laughs> the B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Wow, we knew Taylor Swift was popular, but this is a whole next level, hey? <laughs> yeah, imagine being able to say, well, I'm a doctor of Taylor Swift, and that's because you've just done your PhD on her. One person is doing that, Kate Patterson. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Can you explain what this is? Because it's, it's from the university, right? Yes, yes, it's a legitimate PhD, uh, you know, not a not a fake one. But uh, yeah, I'm about midway through at the moment at RMIT uh, in Melbourne. And yeah, I'm studying pop music fans. And so Taylor Swift was a natural case study to really kind of get in the weeds with that. So oh, yeah. it's been pretty fun so far. How many words is that? Uh, I think it's going to be about 80,000, right. which is... Um, Pretty daunting, but yeah. <laughs> we'll yeah. get there. What does it get you once you're a doctor of Taylor Swift? Like what free tickets? What jobs hmm. can you get? Oh, I wish. I mean, look, if uh, if Taylor Swift ever needs an Australian correspondent, I'll <laughs> definitely put my hands up. But uh, you know, it's a it's a PhD in sort of media and comms, so uh, oh. who knows at the end yeah. of it what, oh, uh, what that wait. will be. Did you actually think it was a subject and you could study Taylor Swift? No, she's just That's chosen. That's exactly what I thought. This oh, was. <laughs> no, she's chosen Taylor Swift to do a PhD on it as part of oh. a degree. See, I saw things in the news where they were saying you can do. Well, that's you can. What, that's what you they are. Say. That's, yes. Like she's still an expert on it, yeah. and that's what she's studying. But it's to talk about how I guess you know Taylor Swift has affected a lot of people in the community and yeah, vice versa. Right. I guess. Can you talk about the phenomenon <laughs> since you've studied this? Because Taylor Swift has always been big. Don't get me wrong; she's always been huge. But at the moment, she's become a cult status, and I say that because previously, when she was doing concerts, it's like. She wasn't that big. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't. Do you know what I mean? But now it's like people will sell their, you know, firstborn child to be able to go to tickets. What do you think <laughs> has made her come back with such a with such a force? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a few things. Since the last time she was in Australia, I think she's released six albums, which is quite nuts when you think about it, with the re-recordings and um, the new stuff that she's done lately as well. But I also think with TikTok, we've got a lot of FOMO. Um, I'm sure everyone in Australia has seen so many clips of the Eras tour from Mm. overseas. We've seen the friendship bracelet making. We've seen the outfits. Like there's so many aspects to it outside of just the music, which I think people are just excited to get involved with, particularly, you know, after the pandemic where we kind of had, had a couple of years where we couldn't do these types of things. But also she just kind of dominated the cultural conversation. I mean, from her relationship with Travis Kelsey, kind of taking on um, Scooter Braun and sort of really challenging different aspects of the music industry. She has really become a symbol as well of like feminist in the way that she is the ones that was like, I'm not putting my music up on different music Flat streams because they don't allow it. And, mm. you know, women should deserve more. But also her relationships with her friendships have always, like her girlfriends have always been like top. Yeah, I think that's the thing. She's kind of using her sort of um, position of power, I guess, to try and make some changes in the music industry, which I think a lot of up-and-coming artists, um, you know, whether it's Olivia Rodrigo or Sabrina Mm -hmm. Carpenter, um, you know, these people that are sort of coming after in this new Taylor Swift generation, I think are very appreciative that she's kind of taking those stands to make it easier for them um, as they sort of come up. Because they call her mum. Mm. Have you? They do. They yeah. call her mother. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. So Olivia mm. Rodriguez, well, thank you, thank you so much, mother. Wow. When she posts yeah. on it, and she will like promote oh. her music. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How old is Taylor? Yeah. She's only like thirty-three, something like that. Is yeah. she? Not old enough to be Olivia yeah. Rodriguez's mother. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you also study the fans. You do um, studies on fans as well, and and her fans, the Swifties, are quite a phenomenon. I think. The only other times I've seen something akin to this would be One Direction fans and maybe BTS, where if we say, if, literally, if we say something bad about either of those two bands, we will get death threats, you know? Um, they don't seem to be that hardcore. But what do you think the difference is between fans now and, say, fans of the Beatles and, and th- those other big phenomenons? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously the Beatles were huge and it's funny when people sort of refer to fandom as more of a new thing where, as you said, we've had these kind of... Um, big fandoms for a long time, but I think the internet and social media has been the major thing that's really changed how fandoms operate. You know, they can meet online. It doesn't have to just be, you know, waiting at the airport for the Beatles to arrive or screaming at a concert. You know, you've got these opportunities to connect with fans from all over the world, but also the artists themselves. Um, Mm. One of the reasons that Taylor uh, has such a loyal fandom is that she's commenting on TikToks. She's inviting fans to her house. She's 
yeah, congratulating them when they, you know, graduate from university. Fans love her immensely. They love everything about her. So all those Swifties love Travis Kelsey. Mm-hmm. Fingers crossed it doesn't happen. But if that relationship doesn't work out, what is life going to be like for that man? In your <laughs> professional opinion. <laughs> Look, I mean, we saw she, um, you know, had broken up with Joe Alwyn, her long-term partner, last year. And, you know, I think Swifties, they like to joke about some of the relationships. But at the end of the day, they want everybody to be happy. I haven't seen too much, you know, Joe slander online. And so hopefully... They didn't. They actually didn't slander her exes. You know what the difference is? Let me rephrase this. If she's broken up with them, they don't slander. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, and... Depends how this relationship oh, so would if, end. If he breaks up with her, yeah, then that then might be, be different, and she might be heartbreaking and write songs about it. Then I guess he's in trouble. Well, Kate, thanks for your time this morning. We'd better let you get back to your study if you're going to become a doctor. Thank you very much. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're doing a PhD in Taylor Swift, and of course, we're giving you the chance to see Taylor Swift live. We've got a trip a day. Uh, all you need to do is listen out for the Taylor song, and then text us. T105. If you want to get that number, it is on our Instagram bio now. Kate, great to talk to you. Thanks so much for having me. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Perhaps one of your charms, quirks, Here we go. character traits that I find endearing. <laughs> That's, yep. Is your ability to occasionally, I'd say maybe once a month, put your foot in your mouth in some form, way, shape or other. Like... Yes. For instance, when everyone here was wearing black one day. And I was like, ooh, got another job interview. And they're like, no, we're going to a funeral. Oh, yeah, that's a classic. Oh, I always do it, though. Yeah. Like, But I think it's just because I ask more questions. Mm. You do dive in head first. Yes. Uh, I mean, who knows? There could have been lots of prospective employees at that funeral. No. I mean, and that I... there is, it looks like there might be someone to replace. <laughs> <laughs> I did do it uh, for, I was saying about, oh. The wedding, you didn't invite us, and they're like, No, she left me. Ooh. I was like, Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course, she did. Why? Well, Why? Of well no, you've got to check Facebook, and you know, like, <laughs> uh, two other favorites of mine. Uh, when you were buying something on eBay, I believe, or Facebook Marketplace, and it didn't arrive, and yeah. you um, abused the person. Yeah, and he said he was in hospital or someone had died, but I don't know about that one. You died like, in that a car seems, That seems a very standard reply now. Well, you, you can't say anything back to that. Mm. You know what I mean? You, once they say that, yeah. end of conversation. Mm. So maybe use that with everyone. Let's mm. get to the point rather than bring up examples. Oh, I just want more. I don't know. I'm kind of me. enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> when you saw uh, a, a fellow colleague at the shopping center with his wife and child. Yeah. And you proceeded to chat to said wife and child. Yeah. And what occurred after that? Well, it wasn't his child <laughs> or his wife. I just sort of fed them up. <laughs> And then he sort of walked off because he's like, why are you talking to someone else's baby and child? And I was like, where is he going? Oh, because they were standing beside each other. They were other. standing next to each other in an aisle, sort of. So I just presumed they were together. So I was like, oh, hello. Oh, and hello. How's your child? And she just didn't know me at all. And I picked up the child. I was like, oh, my God, he's so good. And how's everything? Where, where did he, he go? Where's he gone? Hmm. I was like, oh, anyway, it was lovely to meet you. And she's like, oh, you too. Strange lady picking up my child. <laughs> Did you pick oh. up the child? Yeah, cute. I thought it was a baby, like his. And then he, I went, bumped into him. I'm like, is that not your child? He goes, no, I thought it was so strange. <sighs> but you've never really done it on air, uh, to my knowledge. The only one I can think of that you did on air was accidentally outing a weatherman, but that turned out to be wrong. Um, so this lady's got something up on you then, at least, because she's had a pretty epic one. And it was live on the national broadcaster of Britain, the BBC. She is a weather girl. Uh, for the BBC. And I don't know why they do this, but she does a weather report. Mm. And then, like Graham Norton and the band, what they play, she comes back over to the couch to have a chat to the newsreader. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of them do that. What are you talking about? They even do it on the Today Show. They sit down on the couch. No, the show that you're on, Stav, they do the the same. Yeah. Mm. Tony does in the the evenings too. He'll wrap up his report and and right at the end they do the little banter. Did you ever watch me on the Today Show? Once or twice. Doing the weather? Yeah. And then walking and sitting next to them? Uh, He got so bored he turned it over. (laughs) (laughs) You were always out on a boat or something. No. Knocking your head or in the the park. in the studio. Um, But this lady is in the studio and she has wandered over to chat to the newsreader and the newsreader asks a pretty innocuous question and see if you can spot the blunder. Becoming a little cooler, more to average for the time of year. 
And that's your forecast for now. Cool, so thank you very much. Yes. So, what have you got up at the weekend? Anything exciting? Oh, my niece's surprise birthday party. Oh, that's so, lovely. Yeah, so that'll be nice But not a fun. surprise if she's watching this. Oh, goodness me, I've spoiled it. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Could you do... <laughs> It's easy to do. Is it? <laughs> oh, I called out, remember our old producer, and I called and said she wanted to lift the party. And oh, she said, yeah. what party? And yeah, I went, was, yeah. never mind. Mm -hmm. And she said, is it my birthday party? And I went, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's another. Yeah. another Just Sarah. on the same day. How weird. <laughs> oh. oh, poor thing. Mm. And East wouldn't be watching. No, well, she shared an update uh, after uh, just yesterday on um, X, formerly known as Twitter. How long do we have to do that for? Forever. Ever? Well, mm -hmm. then why bother rechanging it? Oh, well, take that up with Elon. Elon. <laughs> yeah, Here on B105, formerly known as Hit. Uh, the, the, the niece wasn't watching and everything went ahead okay. as planned. But, but she's she not. has TikTok and now she's seen it. Because <laughs> everyone shared it on the internet. <laughs> the B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Alpha Bucks tomorrow. It'll be the 22nd of Feb, uh, a Thursday. Here are three answers to win 10 grand live tomorrow morning. Your letter is L for Lamborghini, Lavender and Looper. Righto, see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye. Stav, Abby and Matt, the B105 Breakfast Show.